fire signs. This is going to be your April 2022 general reading. Uh, this month I'll be bringing you a nine card spread uh, <clears throat> instead of the mini cross because over on the website the individual readings are all about the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction which start um, April 9th uh, and it is where that conjunction happens and what house by your sun sign and there were some really interesting readings I'm talking about something totally different from what I normally talk about and so if you're interested in viewing those you can click on the little eye that's going to show up over here in the right hand corner and that'll take you directly over to the website where members can go ahead and log in and view those and if you're just interested in viewing those without joining the member for membership you can purchase my three-day pass again you can click the link that's the eye that'll show up over here near the end of the video um, I don't know about you but I'm a bit I don't know very happy that spring is here we've had such an ugly past couple of years and now we have this war there's still some COVID going around there's you know gas prices are ast astronomical housing prices are astronomical foods going through the roof you know and so uh, it's kind of a, a, a strange time in which we find ourselves but spring is always about renewal it is about rebirth it is about hope uh, it is about planting seeds uh, and so I'm, I'm really happy that we've we've reached spring so that's just my thing I have a new addition to the family I'll be showing you guys later that some of you may see uh, the new addition I think it was in the earth sign reading I'm not exactly sure uh, but I'm gonna be doing an open reading pretty soon um, now the month of March has been pretty busy for me uh, April is going to be I think out of the entire month of April I may have three absolutely free days where I don't have anything to do maybe four at the most and that's because my daughter is now doing her clinicals so uh, this past week she's done three uh, EMT write outs on the ambulance so she's gone to a fire she's been to a car wreck you know a couple of seizures uh, so and she, because she doesn't have her driver's license yet I'm having to drive her and uh, then she's gonna be doing her ER clinicals where she'll actually get to go into the ER and so um, so this month is going to be extremely busy for me I don't know how May's going to be looking my mom is supposed to be arriving May 1st and that's a whole nother thing uh, and my daughter's gonna be graduating on the 21st and 22nd of May so there's two graduations and um, so I'm gonna be really really busy and I'm gonna try my best to make sure that I get some stuff out to you okay um, and I'm just looking forward to May 22nd because once that happens uh, in a sense my time can become my own uh, that's been 18 years my daughter turns in just a couple of weeks a few weeks she'll be turning 18 and so I got to get a registered to vote and we've got to you know get her her driver's license and uh, so I, I'm looking forward to that so it'll be a whole new chapter for me after 18 years so anyway so I'm coming to you today with the radiant white deck I have with me the La Vida Sibilas okay and if this doesn't resonate with you as a Gemini Libra or Aquarian Sun um, then go back and look at the other elemental readings that may represent your moon or rising sign okay and so you will, at the end, get an opportunity to wrap the reading up with the Golden Nostradamus. Uh, I started an article over on the site and I had to stop writing in the middle, I'm, I hope. And it, it has something to do as well with the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Uh, and so I'm going to try to finish that up. Hopefully this, <laughs> this weekend, we shall see. Uh, and uh, I think you would find that pretty interesting. So, with that being said, let me turn the camera around. I've already done some meditation and shuffling on the fire glyph. And uh, happy birthday, Aries. <laughs> so, another year. Congratulations, you've made it through. Uh, and, and you should be very pleased. The past two years have been tough. And can you believe 
that in just a couple of months, today's April 1st, so happy April Fool's Day, but in just a couple of months, we'll be at the midway point of 2022. I mean, it's just incredible, is it not? So, here we go. Nine cards down. Six of Wands. Okay. Three of Pentacles. Oh, that's always good. Knight of Cups. Nine of Wands. Eight of Cups. Oh, wow. The Hanged Man. I was about to say, this to me looks like some kind of... I don't know, partnership or collaboration. But I think you're going to have to pass this offer up. And this was the first thing that I saw here. It would be different if it were like this. See the offer? Yeah, let's do it. This comes first. This building of something. Then we see the cup being carried off. So... Uh, here we have Neptune, which is going to play prominent. We also have the eclipsed moon here. So our last eclipse was in December. Uh, let me pull up my, my document here. Uh, website members, you do have your eclipse survival guide in your user documents. I suggest that you print that out so that you are aware of, you can download it and print it out. So that you are aware of the eclipses when they fall. Because eclipse season is upon us. It starts on the 30th of April. And eclipses come in pairs. There's an opening and a closing uh, eclipse. So our last eclipse was December 3rd at 12 Sagittarius. The upcoming one at the end of the month, April 30th at 10 Taurus. It will be a solar eclipse. Okay. And so this is the only eclipsed moon in our deck. So this is a timing for me. Uh, next row. The world. The hermit. Wow. So I have these two energies somewhat like the same uh, energy in that it's a... Uh, A, a momentary pause king of swords definitely a person now before oh we get before I get started hold on I got a package delivery so I'm gonna stop it right here and come right back okay all right be right back now what I was saying was that this was definitely a person and before we get started I wanted to explain particularly to those of you who may be new to my channel one card in the tarot can behave uh, three different ways it can represent two different aspects of yourself so it could be about your sun sign but also what you do for a living um, it could be uh, about a, a different person which is what this is and then it can be a situational issue. Maybe there's a legal issue here. And so I just wanted to explain that even though this is a fire sign reading, even as a fire sign, you can embody the energies of uh, a, an air person, a swords person. And you could even, if you're female, embody the energy of the king. Uh, and so if this is, let's say, for instance, you may be an Aries sun or even a Leo sun, but maybe you're a writer for a living or maybe you're a scientist or maybe you're a lawyer, uh, maybe you are a police officer, uh, something of that nature. Or there is a situation that may be occurring or that might occur, which is going to require fine, keen, analytic, analytical and logical skills. Okay. And so that's what I wanted to say about that. So uh, what do we have over the entire reading? We have the temperance card, which is very odd because... These three cards pretty much all have the same type of energetic quality, okay, of contemplation, of meditation, 
of thought, of healing, of um, taking your time to um, sit with the situation. And so I find that to be kind of strange um, that these three cards would come out. So uh, past, present, future, past, present, future, interplay of the cards. And what I have are two wands, two cups, a pentacle, a sword, and then these two, three, actually, one, two, three major arcana cards contained within the spread. And the major arcana cards, one card holds more sway than all of these pip cards put together. So the, the major arcana cards are your spiritual lessons, whereas the numbered pip cards are about the mundane third dimensional issues. And so, as I said at the start of this, when I put down the first row, this to me looks as though there's something that you planned on doing that you wanted to move forward with. Indeed, in fact, you have gotten the okay for it, but yet this offer in, in some way, shape or form uh, kind of passes you by or you have to give it up. If I'm looking here in the past column in the past row, the Six of Wands is about public accolades. It is about hard work done and you finally uh, receiving the rewards that you're supposed to get. But the Three of Pentacles here, <clears throat> the Threes can sometimes indicate a pause before uh, future successes can be realized. So if I'm looking at this row here on the past, we see that there are three wands, three more wands were taken on here, okay? And so sometimes the wands represent your focus, your desire, your ambition, uh, that those things, you know, the, the fire that you have inside to do whatever it is you're trying to do. <clears throat> and maybe you took on three more things, right? You, somebody gave you three more things to do. And now here you in this past, we find you in a position to where you are like you're feeling battered, you're feeling beat up, you're feeling bruised, but nevertheless, you still have enough energy to get back in there and fight. And indeed, we see that you come through this particular cycle here. Okay, now this is my past uh, column here, but reading across the rows, same thing. But then we, we come to this Eight of Cups in the very, very center. And even though Eights are a positive number, and they're typically money numbers, <clears throat> Eights come to tell you that uh, things are about to move, okay? And we see this movement here. The, the thing about the Knight of Pentacles is that, I'm sorry, the Knight of Cups, is that it can be an offer. It can be a person coming in. But whatever the situation is about, it's a tentative thing. It's not something that you that is concrete and solid. It's an emotional quotient to it. And the fact that the horse has paused in mid-stride in mid and has not stepped over this particular, uh, what do you call it, uh, stream of water yet, okay, has not crossed that emotional, I don't know, boundary line, to say the least, um, doesn't really give it any solidity to it, okay? And so <clears throat> we come to this April 30th, our eclipse. For some of you, it may go back to the Sagittarian eclipse in December. This is the only eclipsed moon in the deck. And this card is saying that <clears throat> you seek more, right? And you've invested everything that you can invest in this emotionally, but there's no more effort that you can put into it. You're tired. You can't invest any more into it. So when you come to that particular situation or crossroads, as it were, then the only thing you can do is walk away and leave it behind. You may want to reassess your plans, put the plans of the past, you know, in the past and do something new. And so what that arrives, it, it, it brings us to the hanged man. And so this is a stop. It is not a forever halt. It is a momentary pause where you really need to, to kind of get clear because sometimes the Neptunian energy of the hangman can be all about, you know, self-sacrifice and martyring yourself and denying yourself things. And, that, and there can be this delusional energy surrounding it and illusions, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that if there have been any, any illusions for you about this, this all becomes clear to you, right? And so the hangman is 
this idea of what we most want to move forward, we need to let go. When we most want something, we need to let it go. And in doing those two opposite things, right, we can arrive at a place where we can actually do something. And again, coming here, we see that something does move. The world card is the very last of the major arcana. It says that you have, in effect, kind of learned all of your spiritual lessons during this cycle. This is a time for you to graduate and to move on. But then we come to the hermit. Now, there's two things about this hermit, particularly with the king of swords. This can be an indication of someone who's been alone, a single man, right? <clears throat> uh, but the hermit just by himself is this whole idea. It's a nine. So, and I do have two nines here. I, I just picked this up. So two nines can speak to one of you needs to spend more time alone or uh, a change of address and or house move. Uh, and sometimes this card is about travel, international travel here with the Sagittarian energy, the world. Um, there's also something happening with the nodes. We know that the North Node has now moved into Taurus and the South Node into Scorpio. So there are quote unquote karmic lessons to be learned about not doing the same thing over, not repeating the same mistakes. And so the hermit comes in, this staff that he's holding gives us the support that we need to uh, stand in whatever it is that we're standing in, okay, and uh, kind of give us something solid to hold on to. Um, he is holding out that lamp, and inside the lamp is the star, the star. The star is number 16, it might be number 17, I can't remember off the top of my head, the tower is number 16, but the star offers hope and healing and wishes and dreams but he's frozen in a space in time and he's standing there frozen because he's trying to seek the answers it's a different kind of energy than this this is all an emotional watery realm of of uh energy this is a more solid it's an earth sign it represents virgo and the communication that we have, uh, particularly that which we have with ourselves. And um, he is not only searching for the answer in the dark, but he's supposed to, when he comes out of this, maybe it's an isolation, um, that he's able to tell others exactly what he learned. So he's not only a teacher, he's a scholar, okay? Or he's not only a scholar, he's a teacher. But then we come to this King of Swords. now. Would be, this is another person, um, someone that you either will encounter or you are dealing with or who is at some stage of the game kind of moving out of the situation. And the reason why I say moving out, maybe the person won't be there very long. It could be just this cursory kind of meeting between the two of you, but one in which uh, you can really learn some lessons. Um, he would be an air sign. So a Gemini, a Libra, and or an Aquarian. As a profession, he would be a police officer, a doctor, a surgeon, a chef, a writer, a scientist, uh, any place where sharp instruments and tools or keen intellect is employed to get the job done. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, and, and what I'm picking up is whatever this message is here, there's something about it that kind of. I don't know what's the word get your hackles up those wands are kind of like hair standing up on the back of your neck um, not that kind of creepy feeling but <laughs> I don't know maybe for some of you it could be creepy and then I'm looking over here my knighting here that we see this victory but then there's a hold on it before we move forward because there's something about it that we need to get really clear on this is about viewing things from a higher perspective and then right down the center, we see this three of pentacles, this coming together, uh, this building. So this could be doing you know, something of a financial nature. It can be receiving advice. As you can see, the two people come with their plans uh, to this person. And he, because he's lifted up on a bench, implies that he's got a bit more stature than these two people. He's elevated, so to speak. So he's the, the expert as it were I, I don't 
know if this was I, I kind of get the sense that maybe for some of you this was about maybe moving in with someone or having someone move in with you um, none of these cards say that <laughs> uh, separately okay but there's just this thing I, I, I just keep seeing this people in conversation about moving in together or starting uh, quote unquote a life together um, maybe somebody has a, a drinking problem okay or substance abuse issue um and maybe you thought you were moving uh through this or that the person had overcome it so to speak but they have not um i can't look at this guy because he represents a person and i can't look at this guy because traditionally he represents a person but this is a it's always an event it's a, it's something happens news comes in and then this night comes to move things along but it's a slow movement it's a tentative move like i i i i, I kind of want to but i can't quite bring myself to that kind of an energy so what does that leave me <clears throat> it leaves me these pip cards as they relate to the hanged man the hermit and the world let me turn him over I, I think for some of you, you thought you were on the right path. And you've been able to maintain a balance of logic and reason. And if you haven't, uh, logic, reason, and emotion, that balance. And if you haven't been able to do that, the card is, is asking you now to gain that balance. Okay? You can feel all of the feelings that you need to feel about it. But you don't want to allow your feelings to necessarily interfere with your logic. Let's put it that way. All right. Uh, so let me grab my book here. And we'll take a look at what any of this can mean. This Six of Wands is quite interesting because it, it represents a deserved period after uh, a deserved victory after a period of struggle. Remember, before it was a six, it was a five. It indicates that there is good news or positive information on the way. If you have been awaiting news of a special project, the Six of Wands tells that the response will be positive. Um, it says that it implies that your successful endeavors will attract public attention of some kind, be it an article in a local newspaper or something more widespread. Public accolades will be yours and well-deserved can indicate that relationships are on the improve. Hmm. Doesn't tell me anything. And the reason why I'm touching this car is because that's suggests good news is coming and there's an improvement in a relationship. But that is not what we see. So going back to what I said, it's like you thought things were okay, but then all of a sudden you discover that things are not okay. Okay. Um, three of Pentacles. This card doesn't tell me anything next to these three cards. So Three of Pentacles. <clears throat> it tells of material recognition and a reward for a job well done long-term rewards after much hard work and personal effort it is an indication uh an opportunity that may lead to promotion or gain in a business or commercial transaction or venture again that your efforts will be finally rewarded remember i was saying it's this is what this is telling me that that's you get some type of reward or recognition but then something happens this card can also signify a need for planning and forethought and can be assigned to slow down and consider things carefully before taking action rather than taking on more than you can handle. There it is. If you're looking to move residents, the best time to both sell and buy property is right now and things should run smoothly in this vein. I don't know. That's the Three of Pentacles. Still doesn't tell me anything next to these cards. Nine of Wands. There's three things happening here. The Nine of Wands. 
Beneficial implies rewards and beneficial gains brought about by past deeds. Hardships and struggles in the past have built resilience and character, and this is now being acknowledged. That's what this is. It is a message to use discretion and to maintain control over your personal interest. It asks that you hold on to your belief set and to protect your own affairs. You have the knowledge, mindset, and ability, <clears throat> excuse me, to succeed at whatever you set your mind to and do not allow others to sway you from your path. Remember I was talking about that path? But this guy comes with a lot of water energy. You know, so while it's good to have those all-encompassing emotions, we don't want to lose our balance and not think straight, correct? Okay. Uh, the Nine of Wands uh, can also indicate a suspension of events, in which case you will have the advantage at this time. It can also suggest that there has been a conflict previously and you are forewarned that there be more that there may be more to come ahead of you. So I've got two cards saying that there is a suspension of events, but it's showing up all over the spread, no matter how I look at it. So that's the Nine of Wands. And then finally, we come to the Eight of Cups. Ah, there's a meaning here with the Hermit. So the Eight talks about... <clears throat> A decision to move on and leave the past behind it says you may have been caught up in events or were or are involved in a situation that may have been complicated and costly you may cut all ties with the events and will not give them a thought once they are in the past but you need to get clear on it first and this is a mercury card so this is about analyzing it as well um, it says that something of importance is missing from your life and tells of a quest of finding inner contentment and purpose a drastic sweeping change may be called for to satisfy a longing of a deeper level of contentment. It can imply that long late plans have come to a halt and you may feel stuck, which is this energy. Um, it may be indicating the decline of a matter, slight consequences, withdrawal, and or abandonment. This may prompt you to try something new. So think carefully before going back to established plans as you may wish to abandon them entirely or amend and adapt your goals to suit the situation better. It indicates a situation where the only solution is to let go entirely. Regardless of how much energy or effort has been put into it, if it is still not working, the only option is to abandon it. Do not waste any more of your time and effort. That's what this is. Now, Eight of Cups with the Hermit. It tells of inner realization and positive self-analysis. You are asked to move forward in your life and to let issues of the past heal. Do not dwell on difficulties, hardships, or perceived barriers as this will hinder your progress. That's what it says. Okay. Now. The question becomes... If I had to look at this, it would be these two cards. So the first one I'm going to look at is this King of Swords. It's quite interesting. You know that stubbornness and obstinacy? just don't know why though and and I don't know if the Sibylas will be able to bring us more information on this or not let's see the messaggeri the fortuna and the domestico one, two, three knights. Knight of coins, knight of wands, knight of cups. 
Now, this person I'm going to just say it could come with the message to show you uh, of compassion and empathy and to help you. So we're not going to say that this guy is just bad off the bat. Okay. For some, this can't be true for all of you watching this. Okay. And the reason why I say, it, and this is my future column. The reason why I say that is because this speaks to news from far away. It doesn't tell me what kind of news. doesn't tell me what it's about. But you can kind of think of this like the, if you are familiar with the Lenormand cards, like the horseman. So this is typically somewhat a fast-moving event within an hour to a week. Fortuna. Now, this is the Wheel of Fortune, but this is not about blind luck, okay? Because she's not blindfolded. This is about luck that comes to you based upon things that you've already been doing that finally the universe is going to grant you something good and then we have the domestico now there's two ways to look at this the domestico is typically somebody who helps so this could just be simply the noun an adjective a, a helper that's what he does but he's also known sometimes to be a collaborator right is he really out to help you or is he out to help himself it can even sometimes be the man returning just based upon the imagery of the photo. So now I want to take a look at this Eight of Cups, the Eclipsed Moon. And eclipses hide things, all right? And if you make decisions around eclipses or what happens to you around an eclipse is far reaching. It could be six months out to six years. You just don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, I had a major eclipse back 18 years ago and little did I know I'd be having a kid <laughs> right and she'd be graduating so it's something that you don't know anything about necessarily okay that can completely change the trajectory of your life and not always in a bad way you know we we things happen to us for a reason we have to discover what that reason is I'm gonna look at this eight of cups the Belvedere, hmm. the Gran Consolazione, ah, and the Dilaranti. Remember when I was talking to you about not getting uh, so caught up emotionally that you're not able to like see clearly or keep your wits about you? This is kind of what this is talking about. So even though the Eight of Cups is saying, you know, it's time for you to put the past behind and to strike out and do something new. Don't waste any more effort on the old past. That's that's true. And so what we have is the Belvedere. The Belvedere card is that idea about, in a sense, kind of looking forward. It also heralds the arrival of people, uh, news and events, things changing. But it also signifies this idea that while you are looking ahead towards that, you should be also reflecting upon yourself, what it is you want, what you've been going through, what's been happening with you. Here with the Gran Consolazione, everything you've ever dreamed of, wealth, riches, peace, okay, relationships, we see it here. But then we have the Dilaranti. And this card is called the Lunatics. <laughs> and that's a very significant card because, um, so I, I'm taking it that this idea for some of you to pass up this guy, perhaps you should. For others of you, you should wait to see because this card just basically says that there's, you will be protected from any really bad events but we don't know the motivation of this guy, right? Um, so the Gran Consolazione, a dream come true. Recognition, fame of gaining a good reputation and prosperity, light at the end of the tunnel, a blessing that comes as a result of having taken the right actions in the past. In love, it heralds a period of success, of harmonious relationships, reconciliations, 
an engagement or a wedding, but it can also represent a period of optimism and a positive outlook on life. Financially, it represents money, various assets, and property. It heralds a period of wealth and prosperity thanks to hard work and not blind luck. Remember I said that? It can also stand for your work environment. But then we have the lunatics show up. And I don't know why the lunatics are here, but they are. This is a coins card. These lunatics. It is a negative card that changes the meaning of everything. It taints any other card that comes near it. An irrational person who's given sway to emotions and moods. Remember I was talking to you about that. Someone who's confused. It describes someone who believes in false doctrines or ideas which can ultimately cause their downfall. It indicates someone being swayed by other equally deluded people. The concept of plurality. I've got those three people there. Okay. Someone who has veered off their life uh, purpose, of course, and chosen to follow a road to perdition. It can represent a group of people who negatively affect you due to peer pressure and is associated with the concept of keeping bad company, taking bad advice, and hanging around with bad friends. It can usually be associated with large gatherings where, of people where trouble can be expected, rallies, protests, rave parties. It indicates hallucinations, contradictions, illusions of grandeur, and self-exaltation due to a warped conception of oneself. It can represent someone with a massive ego and someone who cannot see the forest for the trees. So remember I said to you, it's kind of like this obstinacy, okay? That, that still holds true. Um, generally... The Dilaranti describes setbacks, delays, accidents, recklessness, disorganization, opposition, mutually exclusive beliefs, pre precarious conditions, and transitory states. It heralds complications of all kinds and the worsening of a situation, as well as arguments and confusion. It heralds troubles and problems on all front, grave arguments and falling outs with clients, partners, and family members. But it also warns of foolish decisions and dangerous situations caused situations caused by someone's lack of control. It indicates someone who has a lack of self-discipline. Near the Fairview card. There's a Fairview card. It indicates someone who is dangerously violent and who lacks the self-control to restrain themselves. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? It can indicate illegal or confusing situations. It can refer to illegal drug use and antisocial behavior. It can indicate someone with a devious mind or someone who has completely gone off the deep end. Now, remember me talking to you about this card? He's known as the collaborator. And so again, the question becomes, is the person really here to help me or are they there to help themselves? There's help here, but is it the kind of help that you really want or need? I would say that having the Fortuna card placed here is an indication that you will be protected no matter how bad the situation gets uh, or how bad it seems or chaotic it seems from the outside, you will be okay. But that is going to be based upon how you handle the emotional energy. And so think about all that you've done. Think about all that you may have sacrificed. Think about all the hard work that you've put in. And then determine, is getting involved with this person or this situation, what does that really mean for me and everything that I've done thus far? Okay? This is a strange reading. And I wish I could tell you more about it but I can't. 
that will require personal reading. So, um, formulate your question for the Golden Nostradamus card. Let's see what the, you know, this temperance. It's almost as if the cards are saying that, you know, there, there might be a, a substance abuse, something that you are not aware of, a hidden substance abuse problem. Which, in any case, might explain why he's a single man. <laughs> mm? Hmm. That's interesting. And I have these two cards with three people in them. That one. And this one. And here, there's a group of people behind this. Okay. So... Here we go. Well, it is the perfumes. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> the scent of a woman is at its best when only her true nature is expressed. Careful of one or more foppish, frivolous, and superficial individuals. Neither should you be avid or flippant. Sobriety is needed in order to act correctly and not allow oneself to get involved with weak elements. That's really what the cards are saying. And so that is what I have for you for the month of April. I do hope this message helps. And until next time, be well and stay safe. Again, happy birthday, Aries. Bye.